Hello and welcome to today's lesson. I'm your hard-working but indefatigable teacher, Mr. Burton. You will need to watch this video and take notes as you go. You may need to watch certain parts of the video a few times to ensure complete understanding. This is your homework and I will check your notes tomorrow before we get started. I hope you learned something. Okay, um, on to today's topic. This is where supply meets demand, market equilibrium. Short introductory video. Supply and demand. If you've only heard of one economics concept, it's probably supply and demand. Eventually we'll want to derive this concept from basic assumptions about utility and cost functions, but for now I'll just go through the two minute version. Let's start with supply. A supply curve is a relationship between the price of a certain good and the amount of that good producers make. Let's say they're producing umbrellas. Supply curves typically slope upward, since a higher price means producers can earn more from each item they sell, so it's worth it for them to produce more of that item. Now, on to demand. A demand curve is a relationship between the price of a certain good and the amount of that good buyers want to buy. Although there are exceptions, most demand curves slope downwards. Intuitively, you'll buy more of something if it's cheaper. If we graph our supply curve and our demand curve together, we get this cool little X. The price at which supply and demand cross is the market clearing price. If the price is at the market clearing level, producers produce exactly as many umbrellas as buyers want to buy. So every umbrella is sold and everyone who wants to buy an umbrella can do so. What if the price of umbrellas is higher than the market clearing price? Then producers make more umbrellas than buyers are willing to buy at that price, and we have a surplus. Similarly, if the price of umbrellas is set below the market clearing price, buyers want to buy lots of umbrellas, but producers aren't so eager to produce that many, so we have a shortage of umbrellas. It's important to realize that the words surplus and shortage always refer to price phenomena. 1,000 umbrellas could constitute a surplus if the price of an umbrella is $100, or it could constitute a shortage if the price of an umbrella is $1. Where would we expect to see prices in our supply and demand model? The answer depends on many things. It depends on whether there is one producer or many, on whether there is one buyer or many, on what the laws are, and on how quickly the market cr can react to a sudden rainstorm. Okay, our definition for market equilibrium. This is the state of the market where the supply in the market is equal to the demand in the market. The equilibrium price is the price of the good or service when the supply of it is equal to the demand for it in the market. So essentially, it's where supply meets demand. And that will determine the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity demanded and supplied. So market equilibrium where supply meets demand. determines the equilibrium price, in this case $2, and the equilibrium quantity, where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied, in this case it's 80,000 kilograms per day. So where supply meets demand, we have our market equilibrium. Now supply and demand, we know about our supply, we know about our demand, and where they when these two interact, they will produce the market equilibrium. So here we have the price of sugar per kg. And we have the quantity supplied in millions per day, millions of kgs per day. And the quantity demanded at each price, again, in millions of kilograms per day. So we can see there at $2, quantity supplied equals quantity demanded equilibrium with supply quantity supplied equals quantity demanded so here we have us plotting a supply curve 
and plotting the corresponding demand curve. Supply, demand, and where the two meet, we have our equilibrium price and our equilibrium quantity demanded. Market equilibrium, quantity where supply equals demand, determines the equilibrium price in the market and the equilibrium quantity. Quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So equil equilibrium basically means in balance. Quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. Everything's in balance. Now from the supply and demand graph, we can identify that the forces of supply and demand interact to produce a market price for this good, $2 per kg, and in the market at that $2 per kg, 80,000 kilograms of sugar is a quantity demanded and a quantity supplied. Market equilibrium, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. The market price is $2 per kg, and that's important because at prices other than this, Quantity demanded is not going to equal quantity supplied. And at other at a different price to $2, the market will be in a state of disequilibrium. Quantity supplied does not equal quantity demanded. Quantity supplied it may be greater, or quantity demanded may be greater at different prices. And let's have a look at the first of these. Excess supply, market surplus. So at a higher price than the equilibrium price, remember $2 is the equilibrium price, at a higher price, say $3, we know that producers like to supply more at higher prices. So in this case, at the price of $3, producers are willing to supply the market with 120 um, million kgs of sugar. But at such a high price, the quantity demanded is much lower. And in this case, it's 40 million kgs. So we have a surplus. The quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied at this price. So from the initial equilibrium price of $2, as the price increases to $3, the quantity demanded decreases to 40,000 kgs. And at those higher prices, the quantity supplied increases to 120,000 kgs, QS2. So here, in this situation, quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded, and we say that the market has a situation of excess supply. So excess supply, our surplus. Quantity demanded is less than quantity supplied. In the opposite situation, excess demand, market shortage. So at a price lower than the equilibrium price of $2, say $1. Now, the law of supply and the law of demand, at lower, as the price decreases, quantity supplied decreases. As the price increases, the quantity demanded decreases. Uh, yeah, decreases. So here we have at the lower price, quantity supplied decreasing to 40, 000, 40 million kgs and quantity demanded increasing to 120 million kgs of sugar. So this is a market situation where there's a shortage. Quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded. So from our initial equilibrium price of $2, if the price decreases to $1, the quantity demanded will increase, law of demand, uh, increase to 120,000 kgs. And the quantity supplied is going to decrease, law of supply, to 40,000 kgs. So here, we have a situation where the quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied, and we say that the market has a situation of excess demand. So that's our shortage. More is being demanded than producers are willing to supply at that price, at that low price. Excess demand. Market shortages, when we call that excess demand, can be caused by a decrease in supply or increases in demand. So take, for example, um, cost of production increasing. So we know from our supply topic that the supply curve is going to shift left. From the demand topic, um, an increase in demand could be caused by consumer incomes rising. 
If this happens, then the market demand for most goods and services will increase and the demand curve shifts right. So let's have a look. We have our initial equilibrium here, where supply meets demand. Two dollars $2 is the equilibrium price, and 80 million is the equilibrium quantity. So here we're looking at um, a decrease in supply. Now at that initial equilibrium price of two dollars, before the market has a chance to adjust, the decrease in supply means that at the two dollar the price of two dollars, only twenty million is the quantity being supplied, resulting in a shortage. Quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded after the decrease in supply. But as the market adjusts, a new equilibrium price will be established and a new equilibrium quantity will be determined. Again, where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So we say that market forces are coming into play. To reach the new equilibrium, firms are going to increase their prices to maximize their profits. And consumers are going to bid up the price they are prepared to pay in order to obtain the good. So as the price increases, firms increase the quantity supplied, that's the law of supply, and the quantity demanded by consumers will decrease the law of demand. And we, this is shown by the movement up and along the supply and demand curves, the red and green arrows along the supply curves and demand curves here. And this results in a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity where the market reaches a new equilibrium. So the market is in equilibrium. It's established a new equilibrium um, where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Okay, market reaction to a market shortage. Now, excess demand, market shortages, this can be caused by a decrease in supply or increases in demand. So an increase in demand in this case would cause a market shortage. So when demand increases at the initial equilibrium price of $2, more is being demanded, resulting in a shortage. The shortage where quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded now. And again, these market forces are coming into play. Because there is a shortage in the market, consumers that really want the good are willing to pay a little bit extra. So they're going to bid up the price they're prepared to pay in order to obtain the good. And as that happens, firms are going to increase their prices to maximize their profits. So as price increases, firms increase the quantity supplied from the law of supply, and the quantity demanded by consumers decreases the law of demand. And that's shown by a movement up and along the supply and demand curves, resulting in a new equilibrium, a new equilibrium where the price is higher, and the quantity demanded and supplied is greater, resulting in the elimination of that market shortage. So a new equilibrium price is established, in this case it's $3, and a new equilibrium quantity, again where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied, in this case 120 million kgs of sugar. Right, market surplus, the opposite of our market shortage. Market surpluses, excess supply can be caused by an increase in supply or a decrease in demand. So it's just the opposite of our shortage. So take, for example, the cost of production decreasing. The supply curve is going to shift right and increase in supply. 
So initially, we had the equilibrium uh, with, where the price was two dollars and the quantity was eighty. Decrease in the cost of production is going to increase supply. We know this from our supply topic. Now at two dollars, more is being supplied than previously and the market hasn't had a chance to adjust yet. So we're going to show you how the market reaches a new equilibrium from the state of a surplus. Quantity demanded is less than quantity supplied. And this time the opposite happens. Market forces are coming into play, firms decreasing their prices because they've got excess stock which they can't sell at that low price. At, at, at the initial equilibrium price of two dollars and once that price starts to fall and consumers start to purchase more of the goods now as price decreases firms are going to decrease the quantity supply the law of supply and consumers are going to increase how much they purchase the quantity demanded the law of demand and that again is shown by a movement down and along the supply and demand curves until the surplus is eliminated because we have a new lower equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So a change in the market and how the market reacts to establish a new equilibrium. And just running through the other market surplus situation. Remember, excess supply can be caused by an increase in supply or a decrease in demand. Here, if consumer incomes decrease, then the demand, market demand for most goods and services are going to decrease as well, and the demand curve will shift left. Starting from our initial equilibrium, this time at $2.50, consumer incomes fall, resulting in a decrease in demand. Now, before the market has a chance to react, that quantity demanded at $2.50 has fallen right down to 40. Right. The quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied, so the market has a situation of surplus. There are goods that are being produced that are not being sold. The price will decrease from P to P1. And the quantity supplied will decrease to Q2 and the quantity demanded will increase to Q2, providing a new equilibrium. So market forces are coming into play here. Uh, firms need to lower their prices to clear the excess stock. They're not selling enough at $2.50. And as that price starts to come down, consumers start to purchase more of the goods and services as the price decreases. So as price decreases, firms decrease the quantity supplied, the law of supply, and the quantity demanded by consumers increases, the law of demand. Again, as shown by a movement down and along the supply and demand curves. A new equilibrium, a new lower equilibrium price is established, and a new equilibrium quantity is established at that new price. So what the IB examiners are looking for you to be able to communicate is essentially this. Changes in supply and demand caused by a non-price determinant results in the market moving to a temporary state of disequilibrium at that initial market equilibrium price. Prices will change and market forces will cause price increases or decreases that are going to eliminate excess supply. Those are the surpluses or the excess demand, those shortages in the market. And the market will clear to where quantity demanded, again, equals quantity supplied at a new equilibrium. Hey, how are you doing, Econ students? This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Right now, we're going to talk about shifting demand and supply. In previous videos, you learned about demand and why it's downward sloping. 
You also learned about supply and why it's upward sloping. And of course you understand the idea of equilibrium. That is the only place where the quantity demanded exactly equals the quantity supplied. You should also understand why when there's a change in price that moves along the curve. For example, when the price goes up, the quantity supplied increases and the quantity demanded decreases, causing a surplus. When the price falls below equilibrium, the quantity demanded increases, the quantity supplied decreases, and that causes a shortage. And that's what happens when there's a change in price. It moves along the demand and supply curves. But what if there's a shift in the entire curve? Remember, we learned the shifters in previous videos. There's five shifters of demand and there's five shifters of supply. To understand what happens when there's a shift in demand or a shift in supply, Let's take a look at a scene from the movie Frozen. In this scene, Princess Anna walks into Wandering Oaken's trading post, and we find out what happens when there's a change in a market. Big summer blowout, half off swimming suits, clogs, and a sun bomb of my own invention. Using this example from Frozen, let's analyze the market for a sun bomb. The point of learning supply and demand is to understand what happens to price or quantity when there's going to be a change in a market. So this graph helps us to predict what happens when we find out there's going to be a change. The change that happens is that summer suddenly becomes winter. So what's going to happen to the supply or the demand for a sun bomb? Well, it's definitely going to affect demand because it's going to affect consumers. It's going to have no effect on supply or the production of sun bomb. Now, is the demand going to go up or is it going to go down? Well, of course, the demand is going to go down because people don't want to wear sun bomb during the winter time. They want to wear it during the summertime. So the demand is going to decrease or shift to the left. The new equilibrium is right here, and so the price and the quantity is going to fall. Woohoo! Big summer blowout. Now it's time for you to practice. I have six scenarios right here for hamburgers. Your job is to figure out if it's going to be an increase or a decrease in demand or supply, what shifter it is, and what happens to the price and quantity for each scenario. So get a piece of paper and draw six supply and demand graphs and show on each graph what happens for each one of these scenarios. And remember, for each one of these things, we're analyzing hamburgers. Make sure to pause the video, and then I'll explain each one, all right? Good luck. For the first one, new grilling technology would cause the supply to shift to the right or increase. Now, this is supply because this is something that's going to increase the production of hamburgers. And remember, technology is a shifter. The graph tells us the price will decrease and the quantity is going to increase. For number two, an increase in the price of chicken sandwiches, a substitute, is going to cause the demand for hamburgers to increase. Remember, the price of related goods, substitutes and complements, is a shifter of demand. And if chicken sandwiches are more expensive, that means people are going to buy more hamburgers, so the demand for hamburgers shifts to the right, so price goes up and quantity goes up. Ah! One rock head, bro! I'm down! For number three, if the price of hamburgers decreases, that's not going to shift the curve. Remember, a change in price does not shift the curve. It moves along the curve. So if the price goes down, the quantity demanded is going to increase. The quantity supplied is going to decrease, and that's going to lead to a shortage. Don't forget, price never shifts the curve. For number four, if the price of ground beef, a key resource in the production of hamburgers, increases, that means we're going to produce less hamburgers. So the supply will shift to the left, price will go up, and quantity will go down. And for the last one, if there's human fingers found in many restaurants, that's going to decrease the demand for hamburgers, right? So the demand shifts to the left. Price goes down and quantity goes down. So a real quick story. One time I was doing that example in class and I had a student who said that it wasn't going to be demand. It was going to be a supply shifter. The supply would go down. So I walked up to him. I said, well, why do you think it's going to be a supply shifter, not a demand shifter? And this innocent student says, well, if your workers don't have any fingers, then that means they can't produce as much. And so that's going to decrease supply. Ah! 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 Well, mm, it's definitely going to be a demand shifter. If there's fingers found in food, people aren't going to buy it, demand's going to decrease. Now, whether you're in high school or college, you're taking microeconomics or macroeconomics, it's super important to understand supply and demand. Understanding this graph is not just good for class, it's also good for life. If you can predict changes in the market, it can help you if you're in business or if you're a consumer buying things because you know what's going to happen to the price and to the quantity. Now, I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to take a look at the next video that's going to explain price control, something called price ceilings and price floors. And take a look at my review app for your smartphone or tablet so you can get ready for the next test, all right? Till next time. You want to talk about a supply and demand problem? I sell ice for a living. Ooh, that's a rough business to be in right now. I mean, that is really... Mm, that's unfortunate. Okay, thank you. See you next time.